I'm Johnny Rodriguez. We are here with Skeleton Crew Productions and R2FX Productions. Um, as we did last time, uh, we had a little talk about the haunted house and how it was made. So brought you over here so you can see it behind the scenes, see how everything was made, kind of get a visual of it, and give you a walkthrough. Come on in. Okay, we're in one of our first scenes here of the haunted house. It's our boiler room. Um, we uh, make a lot of our own stuff here. We do our own scenes. Um, it's all original. We think about what we want to do. And in this scene, we uh, started off by painting the floor, the walls, and the ceiling black. And it kind of gives it that off into the depths. You can't see where it really ends. So we try to make the scene bigger than what it is. It's actually a very small garage. But with the night lights on hot night and the fog, you really can't tell where it ends. Um, we first start off by, after painting the walls, we start by painting pipes on it and they're kind of shrink off into the distance so those are the ones far away then we got pipes in the middle and that kind of sets a little a distance of space and then you have the pipes on the catwalk which give you in the foreground it's something tangible something to touch you're interactive now you're you're part of it um, after that we have a uh, walls in certain areas that set a, it sets it into another room to give it more depth so in between the pipes, the walls that are painted, we actually have brick walls in areas. And some have been removed for, for some of the scene shots here, but we still have some left. And that just creates like, there's another room on the other side. Um, usually what we do is on hot night, we bring in some fog and some mister, so it's a little drippy, a little misty, and kind of really get your senses going. You can feel it, you can smell it. We actually put a scent in the fog. It's called boiler room scent. Um, if you can hear in the background, you might have a little bit be able to hear a little bit, but there's a, uh, there's a soundtrack playing in the background. Um, we have some guys, and I pick out the pieces throughout the year, and they overlay them and do the sound engineering, but uh, that's usually cranked up about 10 times at least. It's usually very loud, very uncomfortable. The idea is that if they can't hear what's around them, they don't know if somebody's going to jump out. They can't hear footsteps coming, they're very uneasy, they can't tell if somebody's behind them, so the idea is to get them as uneasy as possible. Uh, take them out of their comfort zone. Um, behind me are the two blast doors that separate the rest of the haunt. They were made by our crew. They are framed and then we use a pill and stick tile. And then we bring in the detail work with the uh, floor mats, like exercise mats. We cut it, we do all the trim work, uh, we lay hoses, we hang all the details. It's misty so there's a lot of vines and moss hanging in here from the moisture. Kind of just give it that realistic feel. The more we can bring in uh, of a reality into a scene, even though it's a home haunt and this is done in my backyard, then we take them out of reality. They're not in somebody's garage anymore. From what I understand, when I've asked people at the end, usually about 30 seconds in, they already forgot they're in somebody's house, in somebody's garage or backyard. They, they totally lost. Okay, we're in one of our next scenes. Um, this was the back end of, uh, of uh, last year's military compound. After you pass the black doors, you entered into a military scene. This year, we decided to change it up. Every year, we have a theme, and we try to progress with the theme. We try to uh, basically what we do is we keep a third, tear a third down, and add some, and add a, add a third new. It um, for all the people that return or bring their friends. Hey, you got to come see this. We try to keep a little of the same, but the reality is the ones that have already seen it. If it's the same, they kind of get bored and they're not that excited. They don't come back again. So we do have to change some. So previously the theme was it was a military, had bought all the abandoned property under the city of San Antonio. The tunnels were uncompleted and the subways were, and tunnels and subways were used for classified research in development of gene altering virus. 30 days ago, a breach in security occurred. A valve SCP-1 was found open. It created uh, zombies. So it was a reanimation virus that got loose, infected everybody in the military compound. So this year's theme, we try to continue it. So what we did was, this year's theme was, the virus has, has escaped, it went out, spread out onto the streets, it infected the steel workers at the factory, and so Escape the Factory was our theme this year. So it's basically a steel works. After we leave here, the uh, last part of the boiler room and, and the first part of the military compound, you start to go into uh, the electrical room and then their electrical hallway which leads to their bathroom for the steel factory um, and then you go into the pipe works and some of the more intricate parts of the factory um, didn't find the uh, boiler room set but they have gunpowder this was one we used last year and we have gothic 
So they come about a hundred different scents. So depending on what kind of scene at the end, we use a, a rainforest scent for the jungle at the end. We work that into the scene too, part of the steel factory. But um, this is actually a cardboard tube. We believe in a lot of detail work to grasp everybody. This is actually a preformed concrete tube. It's what they used when they pour for uh, molds for the highway. We put sawdust and oatmeal in the paint. We make it look, give it texture, rusted, and the uh, the side flanges. And then we dupe our own bolts and hot glue them on, and it just starts to bring in more detail. Makes you feel like you're in a real scene and not somebody's garage. Um, this is one of our further scenes down the line. Um, this was actually the electrical room that powers the plant that we'll be going to the steel factory. Um, it's a little torn apart, a little beat up, and some of them's fallen apart. But uh, this is where we made them out of shoe boxes. Um, do a lot of detail work, put in the wires and stuff, um, trying to create the scene. We took a lot of stuff because it is outdoors and the rain comes through. So we've already started packing it away, but there is still some to see. Um, our goal is to get a building. So we try to start getting ready. So a lot of the paints are fire retardant. Some of our uh, camo netting, a lot of things that we could get fire retardant, we did. Uh, another thing we did was get 12 volt lighting. Um, fire is fire marshal approved. It uses very little energy. It's a LED system. One control box powers about 40 lights in a haunted house. And there's four channels. So there'll be a couple in here. In fact, those are 12 volt. So you can run it off a car battery and unplug everything else. But um, after, after this, it goes down more of their electrical hallway and leads up to the bathroom. So you found yourself in the bathroom here. As you can see the mess on the wall. Um, they had a lot of fun making it. Um, it's a couple, it's, a, it's actually the third year we've used it. Like I said, we keep some, replace some, and, and tear some down. This is actually getting torn down after our next photo shoot. Uh, our photographer's coming in to actually get more pictures of the actors, but after, the, after that, it's getting torn down. Um, so here's the story. We use a lot of misdirection. So if we get you to look at something that's really gross, there's a toilet in the corner, it's exploded everywhere, um, we usually have a drop wall, an actor will hide behind it. it slides down, you don't see them, they get, there's a peephole down there, and so they can scare them without actually being in the room. And they usually get the per we do misdirection. So they look that way, and then we pop out over here and scare them on this side. Um, like I said, it's a little faded. It used to be a lot messier. If you hear a hum in the background, that's in a, a 12 volt fan. And what we do is we have a scent called liquid ass. And we spray it in there, and that scent stinks up this, this room, half the room there, and half the room this way. But it really, like I said, we want to incorporate all their senses feel, touch, smell, sound, sight. And that's what really makes them feel that they're in a royal scene, that it's not just a haunt in somebody's backyard. They start, oh God, what did I get into? When is it going to end? How do I get out of here? I want to make them as uncomfortable as possible. If it means gagging, if it means uh, making the music too loud, we do whatever we can to make them uneasy. It's not a fun thing. This is a haunted house. Okay, we're in a very tight area. Um, this is the end of the last hallway you came through, and there's about only about a foot of space. This is uncomfortable. And um, there's a dead end on that side, and there was black plastic hanging here, so they kind of didn't know where to go. It gave me a second or two to hit the drop wall. What a drop wall is, is two closet door tracks. We take a three-quarter ply, and we run it down the tracks with some chain. It falls very fast and very loud, and that wasn't even fully set up. Um, we can see them when they're coming through. We pop out, um, and then we chase them into the next scene. And that's our drop wall. All right, we're in the main part of the steel factory. Um, it's one of our largest rooms. It's uh, 12 by 12, and there's an extension of a, uh, I'd say a six by eight area added onto it. We've added onto the, through the years as far as the upper deck space. We're now elevated from the rest of the haunted house. Um, we take a lot of opinions from friends and ideas and stuff. We, if somebody offers it, we take it. We listen to it. One of, the, one of the friends said that this should probably be our most detailed scene, or a very big scene. Um, but try not to leave it too open because then it's like a, just an empty room. So we didn't want to make it hallways because then it cuts it back down into hallways and not an open room, our biggest room. 
So the way we came, what we ended up doing was we ran netting along the walls, piping, and you could actually see clear across one, two, three hallways over, but they're all separated. There's cut throughs for the actors, so we get in and out. Um, this is the one of our main entrances. We did a lot of detail work in this scene um, to pull off the steel factory. These steel I-beams above us are actually out of wood. Um, we routed them, it was a sheet of plyboard, it was all made from one piece of plyboard, and the I-beams. We cut them into strips, routed them, painted them with rust paint, uh, put in the detail, fake bolts, oil stains, um, everything we took to create the effect. The only, it actually holds two guys, it's well mounted, we actually stood up there. The only thing they can't walk on is the center of grates, it's actually electrical uh, lighting panels. But the steel pipes on top for the little girl, we got and the PVC pipes are actually, uh, steel pipes are actually PVC. Uh, little girl on the catwalk, the idea was to try to take as much up as we can to give you that warehouse or steel factory. So there's an upper deck up there, you see the catwalk later on. When you exit the main body, you'll see their extension warehouse and it goes up two stories. So again, we're trying to take, make you feel like you're in a bigger scene than just eye level. So um, past this steel door, it's the next room. So we're in one of the main, uh, next areas of the main part of the haunt. It's the uh, control area, control panels and all the system that controls all the smelting, all the melting, all the, the factory part. So I had a friend who donated a pallet, two pallets with a frame on it. We decided to turn it into a control panel. Um, standard vents you get at Lowe's. We use stain and varnish. Uh, the control panel we made out of plaster and we use plastic knobs and make it ourselves. But um, down here there's a little light underneath and a little button and it says do not push. I'd say about a third of our haunt, uh, our people that come through are high school kids and what do you want to think every high school kid does when he comes through here? Mostly the guys. It says do not push, they have to push the button every time. And what ends up happening every time they push, that household alarm, depending on how long they hold it, will fire it off and it's right here in their face. So basically it saves me an actor. They scare themselves. Um, and it actually looks like a functioning machine. Smoke's coming out of it on that night uh, when we run the haunt. There's a haunt. There's a fogger inside, uh, and so it's smoking up, steaming. Lights are blinking on it, and uh, they see that do not push. They push it, and they usually jump back, hit the barrels. Of course, there's actors, creepy little girls back here. Um, it's a cool little scene. Next to it, it's a bottomless shaft. There's a mirror on the bottom, mirror on the top. Um, the idea is that you use the repeated scene all the way from top to bottom. So there's brick from the bottom to the top and repeating pipes, same size. There's one light placed dead center. And so in the mirror, it repeats that light every four feet. And again, the brick and the pipes as well. So it makes it look bottomless when they walk by. A um, couple of little flaws here and there. Got to keep it clean. Um, but it was our first one, but came out pretty good. A lot of people liked it, so we'll probably make one a little better next time. So uh, behind me is as you get into a, a plant where they're making steel and stuff, we try to put a lot of thought into it. You got the main body, you got the office section, and you have a different part, maybe where the shipping area is. So behind me is a warehouse. So it's actually would be the shipping area. What it was is we already started taking some down, but um, what it is is it was an area that was a 14 by 14 and it's done with ply boards in their hallways and stuff. We don't want it to look like a bunch of ply boards. We want it to look like a scene, a warehouse factory. So we put up a fake facade. We make it out of styrofoam. We use three quarter inch foam and we use a router to route it out, uh, stipple the brick, put in distress mark and then we start painting it, put in the full, uh, molding trim work, um, had brought in some brand new corrugated steel for the garage and then we have to rust it, make it look old. This is abandoned, this is zombie apocalypse, this is the end, so that's why we have vines taken over. Nobody's taking care of it anymore. That's how it is when everything goes shit house. So we're in one of our more creepy areas here. Um, there's some zombies painted on the back wall and we have uh, LED 12 volt strobes running on top, but it's a uh, on off, on off. So it's not a regular strobe. And what we have in this area is this girl who's really, really good. But uh, this girl's half face is torn off, blood hanging out, and she's got a, she's kind of does this contortion thing. Her body starts to break up and she walks down. And with the light on, off, 
you can't tell because she takes a step you can't tell if she's moving or not so people can't tell if she's a prop if she's real and usually about the time they start getting close to her and they realize she's moving they start to back up and then she lets out such a loud scream that it's heard three houses down and that's what usually helps them push them on through the next scene so um it was uh covered in spider web so it's apocalyptic it's just taken over um we use multi-levels to create the effects so First, we start off by laying, oh, two to three hundred pieces of fish line. Then the guys come in with a bag of uh, web, and that's what the main body is. Then they come in with a web caster gun and shoot all the detail web, which is pretty much torn down because on hunt night, we Halloween night, when the hunt's open, we see about 2,500 to 3,000 people. So as they come through, more and more spider webs are torn apart, but it's usually just wrapped like a hallway of spider webs. <laughs> So here we are, we're back up in an area and it might look a little familiar to you. And that's because we're back up on that deck, that 12 by 12 area that I was telling you about where we try to separate it into hallways without closing it off. So this is the other side of the pipes and this is the netting that we have in here. It kind of separated, but you can still see through. Um, we had a girl in here that night that was working three scenes at once. In the room next to me, she was hopping over there working a spark rod and diving through our cut area. But we were able to see the people as they're passing and when they're coming through we're chasing them through the pipes making eye contact and falling along the shaft here and they start to like oh god they're on the other side they're on the other side and just about the end we dive down underneath and pop up on the other side and kind of freak them out like how did we get on our side but um so this is the rest of the other half and it wraps around here takes a pit off the other side and goes back down and the drop wall that i was working on the other side earlier is now on this side All right, we've skipped a couple of scenes and we brought you to the end. We're just about ready to close up here. What we have here is one of our more favorite scenes for our guest. Um, we try to make the haunt have sense. Um, we wanted to go with the flow. You might not know it, you might not understand it, but at least when we created it, we had to have some kind of idea. We didn't want to throw you into a clown scene, then vampires, Dracula, zombie, aliens. So what we did was we created a storyline where you came in through a steel factory, there are different warehouses, there are electrical rooms, all the different rooms and stuff. And just like most workplaces, they always got a junkyard in the back. People always have scrap stuff, they throw it out, throw it in the field, and it gets a little overgrown. So that's actually how we worked in this jungle room. This jungle room is one of our longest running scenes. It seems to be a favorite, every year we want to take it down, but every year when we ask what was one of your favorite scenes, this one always comes up several times. And so it's their overgrown field to the warehouse is how we worked it in. Um, inside, there's two uh, actors and they are in ghillie suits, professional army grade ghillie suits. We got them for the military. So they're hiding in there with the camo, several layers in there, vines, jungles, uh, just you name it, branches, trees. We try to layer it as much as possible, make it as thick as possible. It's actually very hard to go through and it's usually completely covered in fog and the actors they can stand right in front of you and you wouldn't even know it. Um, again, we use 12 volt lighting in there. It's covered in snakes. So if there's a phobia of snakes, claustrophobia, can't see, um, that's where we get them. Uh, and then there's always somebody at the end. So even when they come out and they're in the light and their friends are standing there 10 feet away, right on the side, there's another two actors that hammer them again, just one last time to shove them, kick their ass and push them out the door. Oh, thank you for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Um, this will be our last year here. So if you want to come see it, this following year will be the last year here. Come check us out at 6239 Flint Rock. Uh, again, thank you uh, to all y'all who took the time to watch it. Thank you to R2FX Productions. Um, hope to see you out here. Thanks and have a great one.